What's going on YouTube? This is Jabber Tech, and today we're going to take a look at two awesome smartwatches, two awesome Wear OS devices. Both of these watches are very similar, but both of these watches are also pretty different. One main difference is you can buy two TicWatch Pros here for the price of one Sunto 7. After watching this video, if you think the TicWatch is the one for you, or you've already made up your mind on the TicWatch, and this is just solidifying that, check my link down below because I can save you 10% on this. I can also save you 10% on other gear from Mobvoi. Check my link below if you want to save a little bit of coin. But let's go ahead and take a look at the all new beefed up 1GB of RAM TicWatch Pro versus the Sunto 7 and hopefully I can help you guys make a decision on which one better suits your needs. I'm going to talk about the main points that I think most people are concerned about when they purchase a smartwatch. So we're going to talk about smoothness, fluidity, we're going to talk about battery life, we're going to talk about GPS activity tracking, and then we're just going to talk about overall value and happiness. How happy am I with both of these watches? Before we get into the actual review, these are both premium high quality Wear OS devices and they did not slouch, they did not skimp on any of those premium features. So both of these watches have NFC for mobile payments. Both of them can be used to connect a Bluetooth headset, leave your phone at home, download music, and just be good to go. Both of these watches also have an IP rating, so you can swim with these. You can also wash your hands with them. You don't have to worry about water coming into contact with these watches. Both of these watches have one gigabyte of RAM. The processor is the 2100 on the Tick Watch and the 3100 on the Sunto. The Tick Watch also has half the storage at four gigabytes, while the Sunto has eight gigabytes of internal storage. They both have beautiful screens, although you know that the Tick Watch has this dual layer technology, whereas the Sunto 7 just has a super bright, super vibrant screen that is super viewable on the outdoors. Yes, that's a lot of supers, but it is an awesome, awesome screen. Both of these screens though are 1.39 inches, although it does look like the Sunto has a larger screen. It really just has this larger bezel, but the Tick Watch has a different design. I think the Tick Watch will look more like a traditional watch versus the Sunto 7, which looks more like a sportier watch, but again, different design cues for different folks. Starting with the Tick Watch Pro here, just as a disclaimer, they did come out with a newer Tick Watch Pro for 2020. Has a little slightly different design for the bezel, but basically it's the same internals as this 4G LTE model that I have here. Of course, the LTE model gives you cellular connectivity, where the all new one for 2020 does not. But the internals are basically the same, and that means you get one gigabyte of RAM. You also get the older Snapdragon 2100 processor. But pointing to my first point, this is a fluid, this is a snappy device. I have no issues with how this watch functions on a day-to-day -day basis. Granted, this is Wear OS, so you do get the usual Wear OS hiccups, but the 2100 is still a fine processor when paired with one gigabyte of RAM. One thing I will have to tell you guys, don't cheapen out, don't buy a device that has less than one gigabyte, because you're not gonna be happy, it's not gonna be as smooth, it's just not gonna be an overall pleasurable experience. So in terms of the Tick Watch, even though it has the older processor, the one gigabyte of RAM definitely kicks in and really helps it be a smooth and enjoyable watch. If you guys have been following my channel, you know I love Wear OS. I think it's one of the better platforms that you can have on your wrist just because it is very useful. The Google Assistant is something that keeps me coming back to Wear OS devices. It's just a very fast and very informative assistant on your wrist. What's the 10 day forecast? Partly cloudy with a forecasted high of 53 and a low of 35 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, Google, where's the closest Starbucks? You get a nice graphical representation and you can obviously ask it things with your voice. You really don't have to touch this watch if you don't want to. If you're really into the Google ecosystem, having the assistant on your wrist and having your Google feed is something that is definitely more useful than say another operating system. I think they do a nice job of kind of giving most people what they want. There are plenty of apps here if apps are your thing and there's also plenty of watch faces as well. So if you like downloading watch faces, you can go ahead and choose as many watch faces as you want. So in terms of fluidity, 2100 processor with one gigabyte of RAM, no issues with this watch being super fluid and super smooth. Now I'm gonna answer the same question with the Sunto 7. How snappy, how smooth is this watch? Because it has the new 3100 processor in here. It also has one gigabyte of RAM and it has eight gigabytes of storage. Whereas the Tick Watch Pro only has four gigabyte, so you're gonna be able to store more music on this watch. And I have to tell you guys that it is slightly a little bit faster. 
I do notice a difference, but that's only if I was using the Tick Watch and then I switched over to the Sunto. In terms of everyday usage, I do not feel that you're gonna have much of a better experience picking the newer processor versus the older processor. Granted, if you open apps side by side, of course this is gonna open it slightly faster, but on a day-to-day -day basis, it's not something that I would say you must have the 3100 over the 2100. It's really just a Band-Aid processor. It doesn't give you that much of a speed improvement with everyday life. But the Sunto is super snappy, it is super fast, just like the TicWatch Pro. Everything loads really, really quickly. And I'm super happy with the Sunto 7. I'm especially happy with this super bright screen. This is one of the best screens that I've seen on a Wear OS device. It gets super bright outdoors. You get a lot of nice colors. It's just a very, very pleasing panel. Everything looks sharp, everything looks crisp. The panel is something that while you're staring at this thing, you're definitely going to enjoy looking at it. Now the Tick Watch itself has a little gimmick, has a little trick up its sleeve as well. And that's this dual layer technology. So the watch tries to save power by turning off the main screen and giving you this sort of monochrome type of screen. It still gives you the time, the date, your steps, and your battery life right down there. So even if you are running super low on battery life, you can enable power saving mode on both of these watches and be able to get through the day. In terms of the overall screen quality, I think Sunto definitely edges out on that, on that point. But in terms of fluidity, both of these watches are very, very fluid. 250 versus 500. You're going to notice a little bit of a speed boost, but I don't know if that's worth twice the price. You guys let me know down in the comments below. The next thing that we're going to talk about when it comes to these watches is, of course, GPS activity tracking, because that's where, honestly, the Sunto edges out on the TicWatch Pro. But again, it depends on what type of information you want from a fitness watch, what type of athlete you are. That just depends on you. The Tick suite of applications, this Tick exercise, as they call it, does a really good job. I think they do a nice job of locking on to the GPS signal. I've never had an issue with GPS. It gets a nice, strong connection every time. Super fast to lock on as well and this is their exercise but of course both of these watches use Google Fit you can track about 70 different types of activities but one thing that TicWatch has that I have not seen on any other Wear OS device is you get this freestyle type of workout you can actually track your reps so if you are lifting weights this is a great way to kind of track your rest in between each rep and kind of track how many reps you're doing so I think that's pretty cool you can see here set number two set number two pause time this is just an awesome way to track your rest periods between your reps and I think a lot more manufacturers should include this type of activity tracking because a lot of people do use these watches for weightlifting and they use them at the gym. Mobvoi does a great job with their tick exercise suite and they also do a nice job of giving you post-workout information. Again, it is basic information. It's not something that you'd get from, say, a more advanced fitness tracker like this Sunto watch, but it does give you what most people want to see after a workout. Now it brings me to Sunto, and Sunto has been making fitness watches for a super long time. This is the first time they've made a Wear OS device, and I think it is a very premium fitness Wear OS device. If you're looking for more information, more than just the basics, this is the watch that you want to get. Thanks to having the Google Assistant on your wrist, the Sunto 7 does an excellent job of being a great smartwatch when you're not working out and being a great fitness tracker when you are. Again, the Sunto 7 is a great combination of a fitness and a smartwatch together. A lot of watches are only good at one or the other, but the Sunto 7 hits the mark for both of those points. It's a great smartwatch and it's a great fitness watch. The Sunto application, while it does need some work, check my link down below for the full review. We'll give you a lot of information on just about most of the activities that you're going to want to track. So again, this is what you get in Sunto's application. What Sunto has that the TicWatch Pro does not have is you get free offline maps. So as you charge this thing, it's going to download new maps for wherever you are, and you're going to be able to leave your phone at home, go for a run, go for a hike, and be able to see all of your maps here. And that's something that no other watch has at the moment. No other Wear OS device has this at the moment. So when you connect this to a charger and you're on Wi-Fi, this is going to download maps for wherever you are. So no matter where you go, if it's a new city, a new town, you'll be able to get brand new maps downloaded directly to your watch and it's not something that you have to think about. You don't have to go into your phone and say download a new map. This is automatic and I really like that because it just means no matter where you are you can just randomly decide you want to go for a hike or a run 
and you're going to have a map waiting for you on your wrist. Again, no other Wear OS device does this, and their application is super cool. I really like their application, but where the Suunto 7 inches far apart from the Tick Watch is that you get more information after a workout. You get a lot more detailed information, like your recovery time. You also get a lot of information about your Epoch score, and you just get an, more information about your overall fitness. So that's definitely where the Suunto inches apart in terms of fitness tracking. And again, Suunto is a fitness company, Company, so it makes sense that they give you a lot more information. Is that worth it to you? For a lot of people it is. For a lot of people that really want to track their activity and really want to track their health, Suunto is the way to go. And also, it is a great smartwatch. It is really snappy. Now, the Suunto 7 does not have a speaker and does not have a microphone. The Tick Watch does have a speaker, does have a microphone. So this one you can take and make phone calls from your wrist. But the Suunto 7, you can only reply to text messages from your wrist because it does have a microphone, but it doesn't have a speaker, so you can't hear what the other person says. Hey Google, what's the 10-day forecast? So you still can see all of your information just like you would on the Tick Watch. You just don't get that audible response from the Suunto 7, but you still can reply to text messages using your voice. That's just one key difference between these two watches. Next, I want to talk about battery life, guys, because Wear OS is definitely not a battery champ and it doesn't stack up to other competitors out there in the wearable market. So let's break down battery life and let's start with, if you do absolutely nothing with these watches, the Suunto 7 will get you a day and a half and the Tick Watch Pro will get you two days. The Tick Watch Pro, if you do absolutely nothing and you keep it in this sort of energy saving dual layer technology screen, you can get anywhere up to 30 days, but really this is just acting as like a Casio watch. You're just gonna see the time, your steps. You're also gonna see the date and your battery life. That's not what you paid $250 for. So if you use this as you normally would, if you use this how it's intended to be used, let's say you're gonna get a day and a half. And if you're super frugal with checking the screen and doing that things, you're gonna get two days. So basically the smaller battery on the Tick Watch Pro will get you an extra half a day. So why does the Suunto 7 get less battery life than the TicWatch Pro? Well, that's just because the screen quality on the Suunto 7 definitely outshines the TicWatch by leaps and bounds. It's a much brighter, it's a much crisper screen than the TicWatch Pro here. So even though it's a 450 versus 415, it's definitely pushing a lot more in terms of screen quality. But really guys, half a day is not really much of a concern to me. You're gonna probably charge these every day anyway. If you use GPS, it's gonna drain it a lot. It's gonna drain a lot more on the Tick Watch because it has that older processor. The 3100 in here does a much better job of power with GPS. So if you're using GPS activities, I'd say the Suunto 7 is not gonna drain as quickly as the Tick Watch Pro. Long story short, guys, you're gonna charge both of these watches on a daily basis. That's, that's battery life. But let's just talk about the overall enjoyment of both of these watches. Should you pick one over the other one? Well, that really depends on what your fitness tracking activity needs are, and it really depends on you personally. I'm super happy with both of these watches. I switch back and forth on both of these watches. I like the fact that this has a speaker, especially now that I'm indoors a lot. I'm working from home. I'm pretty much in home 24 seven. The ability to take calls from my wrist while my phone is in a different room is definitely a plus, but I also like the Suunto 7. I like working out with the Suunto 7. The maps are something that I think are super, super cool. Where the Suunto 7 really outshines the Tick Watch Pro in terms of overall enjoyment and overall fun, I can't get enough of this watch face that they give you. Again, it uses all of their map information. It's a heat map and you can go in and you can select different heat maps. You can choose a heat map for different activities like running, trail running, cycling. There's a whole bunch of heat maps that you can choose from. And this is useful if you are in a new neighborhood or if you are in a new city and you want to find out where people run. And I think it's just a super cool watch face. And let me zoom out and let's do a 10 mile radius. I'm really out here in the woods, so I don't know if this is gonna pick anything up. It looks like not a lot of people here actually do any sort of activity, but I like this watch face. It's a super fun watch face, and that's something that, as someone who loves watch faces, I have not changed this on the Suunto 7. You guys know I love watch faces and I change on a daily basis, but not on this watch. I just really enjoy this heat map, but I like the Suunto 7 more for working out. They give you more details, it's just, more of a informative watch when it comes to working out. So again, it depends on your needs. 
the main difference is price guys and this is 250 bucks and this is 500 bucks so my advice to you guys if money is no object pick up the Sunto 7 I think you're gonna be super super happy with the Sunto 7 if you're looking for an awesome Wear OS device you cannot beat this right now when it comes to fitness when it comes to Wear OS this is one of the best watches on the market if money is something that's high on your list when it comes to picking a Wear OS device, I think that the TicWatch Pro is the best Wear OS device on the market right now for its price and for its features. You're getting a lot of features. I like their Tick suite of applications. I like their Tick Health. I think they do a nice job with their Tick Health application. Both of these watches, unfortunately, aren't really good at sleep tracking, but that's a Wear OS problem. As someone who doesn't track their sleep, I'm not concerned, but I know a lot of you are. But again, 250 versus 500 bucks that really comes down to your wallet and your budget don't cheap out and don't buy the non one gigabyte version because you will not be happy you're going to tell me down in the comments that the watch is not snappy and it's not fluid i don't want to hear that from you guys because you've been forewarned let me know what you think about both of these watches in the comments down below i always like to know your opinion as well thumbs up subscribe and i'll catch you guys next time